to order. Roll call, please. Ed? Sandersville? Here. Wiley? Here. Andrew? Here. Amos? Kroll? Blint? Here. Maher? Here. Approval of the agenda. Any changes, John? No changes to the agenda. I would just again remind everybody um, to use your microphones well as uh, as we live stream this. So, but no, no changes to the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Sandersville. Yes. Wiley. Yes. Andrew. Yes. Blit. Yes. Maher. Yes. All right, uh, any citizens' comments? Uh, I was not contacted by anyone to uh, make any comments to the board. Okay, and we'll go to the approval of the minutes, claims, and financials. Ed, would you like to, or actually John? I, there was, yeah, before Ed does his report, um, I didn't have anything really to share other than what you might notice um, is, uh, in the uh, in the hot lunch account um, are seniors who are finishing up and they have a balance or they had a balance in their account uh, anything over ten dollars we refund so you may have noticed that in the financials that there were a number of uh, uh, payments to individuals and that was for the uh, remaining balances in their lunch accounts <coughs> anybody have any other questions Okay, um, just a couple things with the financials. Uh, you can see on, on page one there, the numbers at the top of the financials. Uh, revenues uh, for the general fund so far, just a little over $19 million. And the expenditures are 15.7 million so far this year. You can see the percentages. Uh, they're, they're similar to what they have been in past years. You can also see the uh, other fund revenues and expenditures on the, um, uh, remainder of that page as well as on page two. Uh, page three, um, just to report on uh, a couple of the, the key items there. Uh, clear on the right, uh, again, these are projected numbers. So the um, uh, unspent authorized budget ratio, uh, we project at 18.7%, which is uh, an increase, which is good, uh, an increase from the 16.2% that we um, originally anticipated with our budget. And if you go down to the bottom, the solvency uh, is 10.4, which again is an increase, not only of um, what we budget this year, but also over last year. And then uh, just on page five, um, clear on the left side, you can see a summary of all funds that have been received um, in fiscal year 19, um, year to date, as well as fiscal year 20. So. Uh, with all funds, we have uh, 24.1 million and uh, just over 20 million of expenditures. So, And then uh, just uh, one other note, um, you probably have heard uh, some talk in the media about the COVID-19 funds that will be coming from the federal government through the state of Iowa. Uh, we did file the application last week. It was a short turnaround because it was due today. And uh, funds are supposedly due to us by Wednesday. And um, the amount that we will be getting is $315,929. And uh, again, that was handed out proportionately uh, according to Title I numbers um, and, and the ratios that they use to distribute Title I funds. We will receive. We will receive. They, you keep me track of everything. It has nothing to do with. So you kept track of. We yeah. We started. I'll let Ed comment on that. He he set up codes and coding. Yeah, we had to uh, set up additional codes. So any like technology, um, additional items uh, like postage, mailing out packets, um, extra pay that we've. Uh, paid to people uh, during this shutdown. Any of those uh, expenditures uh, can be used by those funds. And actually, they can carry over to the next year. And I believe it's uh, September 30th. They have
have to be uh, expended by. So. I think, it, it might, is this right, Ed? I think it's 2022. Is, is that right? I was thinking it was 2022. That may, I, I may be wrong on that. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd have to look, but I, I thought it was right. Yeah, it, it, it could very well be. Do those go into the general fund or? Yes, general fund. Dispersed anywhere? Uh, general fund. Well, they could also be used in other funds too, though. Right. But majority we anticipate um, with general fund expenditures. But uh, they can be transferred to like food service uh, for some of those expenditures uh, that we uh, basically, because we'll have reduced revenues and we still paid out the employees through the end of the year. So. Anything else? to approve the minutes, claims, and financials. So moved. Second. Ed? Uh, Sandersville? Yes. Wiley? Yes. Andrew? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Maher? Yes. Okay, for reports, uh, Katie Gavin, Instructional Services. All right, I'll have Katie come over here and use the microphone. You have in your packet, you have, uh, what we wanted to do it was a couple of things uh, because the board did ask uh, for an update on how uh, student engagement and how kids were participating in voluntary learning opportunities. So Katie's going to, Katie and, and Todd and Nathan are going to share uh, some of that among some, some other items. So I will hand it over. Okay, so if you're looking at the iWriting pages in your packet, that's where I was going to start. The first one is reading. So this is the buildings for the elementary group. Um, you can see by building it's broken up um, that Harlan Lincoln, then you've got the middle school the high school and wisdom quest down at the bottom. We're not going to pay attention a whole lot to the data for the three secondary based buildings just because they have supports from there, but they're using them for a very specific reason in data gathering. So you see one out of 482 students at the high school. Well, that's out of maybe 12 students who are actually using the program or have been assigned the program um, in a very unique situation. So we're going to ignore that part of the data, but um, on this, uh, document you can see that at the top it says all schools reading and the date range we are collecting data from the 13th of April through last Wednesday May 6th and then you go down to that next block and it talks about the number uh, of students using instruction and so out of our total students enrolled in the system and it's not everybody because we have preschool and we have other grades in there um, you can see that we have 481 students engaged in the reading program for my ready and those students, um, out of 481 students completing lessons during those, those four weeks of time are 454. So out of 481 students, we have 454 that are actually engaged and completing assignments in reading. Now there's reasons why they might not be, the 40 plus that aren't, uh, or the 30 plus that are not there, it could be a very a myriad of reasons whether they're not understanding the program, they don't feel comfortable with it, they haven't found it, they haven't um, been able to access those types of things. We have never used iReady Reading prior to this, the April 6th um, date. So a week before this was the first time we had ruled this out. So there's lots of reasons why we have some kids not in there. The lesson time on task, the average lesson time on task per student, this is a little bit skewed. This is uh, time per week the average time per week that students are spending in the system so per week not the total time um, overall across from that you see a blue pie um, and lessons passed the i ready is very complimentary of how our students are keep how our teachers are keeping our students engaged we have 72 percent of those students of those 481 students um, with a 70 to 100 percent pass rate so when you get into the system, you go through lessons, you go through practice, you go through some more practice, um, you take some little uh, questions along the way to make sure you're understanding it, and then you take kind of a game-based quiz type uh, for the program. And so 72% of our 481 students are in the range of 70 to 100% passing rate. That means that they're learning it. Um, for 
that 15 minute uh, learning session that they had, that, that they're getting it. 15% of our students are getting a 50 to 69% passing rate, and 13% of our students are from the 0 to 49%. Now, you can imagine that depending on the age of the child, are they clicking through? Are they not understanding it? Are they just doing it because mom made me do it? There's lots of different reasons, but that number is only 13%. So we're really excited and proud of our, our students and our families who are staying fully engaged and doing their best to learn in these very difficult times. Um, as, in a new program that they've never seen before they got home on some sort of device. So then going down, you can look at all of the buildings. If you start with Harlan, um, the average lesson time on task per student, again, that's, it's not two hours per lesson, that's per week. Um, students using instruction, um, is 122 out of 229. So the students that are engaged in that is roughly um, half. And the average lessons passed are 75%. So they have a very high passing rate for the students who are engaged in the reading. Um, then the 0 to 49%, um, the lowest percent is 16%, and then 50 to 69% is 18. And you can go across and see um, the overall students completing lessons in that for those, those weeks. Um, it's, it's, it's really heartening information because 75% passing rate out of all of those students engaged is, is still amazing. You take into consideration that we have, I believe, um, 19 or 20 families receiving paper packets who aren't even in here. So the rates go up as we, as we go through. Lincoln um, has 156 students out of 246. And the average percent of lessons passed are, is almost 75%. It's right at 74%. Again, kudos to those students who are really working hard and, and, and doing that. And we have data for, again, there's a whole lot of students that we don't have data for, but the ones that are engaged in this program, they're doing really, really well. Um, if you jump down to Salem, Salem has 79 out of 107 students, and the, the average passing rate is a 79%. So again, um, those students who, who are engaged in the program, they're, they're learning something. Um, then Van Allen is at uh, 123 out of 243 students with an 86% passage rate. So this is, this is just uh, one piece of information that talks about how hard our students and families are working at the elementary level. Um, they're, they're doing lots of other things. Teachers are engaging them in lots of other ways. So this is just one piece of data. You might want to say, well, why is 100% not in this? Um, for a lot of reasons, and some, some of those reasons are outside of our control, but for those students, these are really good numbers, and we're very proud of our families uh, and students who are participating in that. I'm going to roll right into the math one, and then we can go ahead and see if you have any further questions. Um, so the, the next one is math, and this one has, for some of our buildings, a lot higher rates. So if uh, you look at the total lessons passed, um, first of all, we have 545 students engaged in math. They're more... Uh, connected with math because we've used this program for this whole year. So they knew how to get logged in, they knew where to go, they had uh, testing and diagnostic testing prior to this that the system recognized. So they were a little more engaged with this. Um, so for this one, uh, when you look at the total number, we have 82% of our students, of that 545 students, who are at a 70 or above for their passing rate. So their math is connecting with them, it's something familiar and it's something they're engaged with. 12% of all of those students are at a 50 to 69%, and only 6% of those students are at a 0 to 49%. So then again, you jump down to the bottom, and how does that break out for our buildings? Um, the average percentage for Harlan was 87% of those 133 students are at a 70% or higher, um, and only 1% are at a 0 to 49. So out of all of the students, K through 5, that means very few students are just clicking through or not understanding or really struggling with the academics in the program. Uh, Lincoln, 86% of their 169 students are at a passing rate of 70 to 100%. Uh, jumping down to Salem, 88%, and Van Allen is at 85%. So when you look at those, the familiarity of the program is, is really getting to our students um, well. Teachers have been asked to assign three lessons in math and three lessons in reading out of this program that students are asked to be engaged with each week. And, and wow, they're, they're committed. It's, it, those are some really significant numbers um, overall, especially when we know that there's a lot of things competing for their time. So with that, I would entertain any questions.
Is there something Salem is doing to get the higher percentages of participation? I mean, just looking back on reading the students completing lessons, there are 69% versus the next highest was at 58%. And then in the math, they were, again, 100%, and you have them, I mean, most of them are at 100%, but Salem was 100% completed. Right. Is there more communication those teachers are doing with the uh, students or parents? Or? <laughs> That's, that's a really good question, and I've looked at that and asked those same things, and I don't know that I have an answer yeah, other than the size is smaller, so you're working with fewer families, and those families just are keeping each other connected, whereas the other buildings, you have more families. I, I, don't, I don't know um, exactly why that is. I know all of the teachers across the districts are, work, are working hard, um, and I know that those teachers um, are are doing Zoom sessions or doing some type of sort of virtual connection. So I hope that, that those are those things that are paying off, but as far as Salem, they're, they're doing a great job. Yeah, they are. I will interrupt you right there. <clears throat> for the 615 oh. public hearing on fiscal year 20 budget amendment. Can we do that? Do you want to? Yeah. Ronnie, is is there? I just got a I got a text that yes, sir. Um, said the YouTube link is not on. Is we had to update it last second. Oh. Uh, I, we're emailing it to Tanya right now. Oh, okay, okay, very good. That work? I'm sorry. We are we are on the public hearing, right? Public hearing. Okay, right. very good. Uh, yeah, so you have the documents, you have the, uh, the document um, in your packet for the public hearing and the changes to the fiscal year 20 uh, budget, so I'll let Ed go through that. Yeah, again, this is uh, for the fiscal year um, 20 budget that we are currently in. Um, what the, the state of Iowa uh, requires you to do is if you, uh, you have to publish your budget, this was done last April um, in 2019. Um, so again, that was an estimation of what you were uh, anticipated to spend as far as uh, expenditures for the district. This is in the general fund only. Um, so what the state of Iowa requires is that you um, go ahead and uh, amend the budget if you anticipate going over in one of the four categories. Um, four categories are instruction, and uh, then support services, which is like administration, uh, utilities, building grounds, transportation. You have non-instructional programs, which is basically food service, and then other expenditures, which um, the majority of that is uh, related to debt service or uh, paying off of contracts. Um, you can see that um, the, uh, and the, under the instruction category and total support services, uh, what I did was I uh, decreased the uh, instructional uh, expenditures and increased the support services, basically because of a reclassification of expenditures um, that the state is um, requiring of us this year. Uh, one, in, and mainly that was for instructional coaches. Um, they, the expenditures for those uh, since they did not work directly with students, they worked with our uh, teaching staff. Uh, that went down to support services instead of uh, under the instruction area. And then uh, also we anticipate some additional COVID expenditures. Uh, so uh, I didn't uh, decrease the instruction as much as I uh, increased the support services because I anticipate some uh, expenditures uh, coming out this year. Uh, the other expenditures, uh, we have a uh, Apple lease that we entered into for about three hundred thousand uh, dollars. Again, when we put this budget together, that was we didn't know the amount, so that was not included in there. Uh, we knew we would probably have a lease uh, for the Apple computer lease, uh, but we didn't know what the amount was, so of course we couldn't put it in there. And then also uh, the timing of construction projects, which falls under uh, the total. Um, other expenditure uh, column, uh, we uh, moved some of those up, a few of those up. Um, 
such as uh, like playground landscaping um, and uh, some of those projects. And again, instead of putting them into next year, uh, while we have the time and the resources, uh, we're uh, carrying them out this year. So, and this again does not affect property taxes in any way. Um, it's just basically a reassigning of resources that we already have. So, right. questions, comments? Did not receive any public comments. No, I, and uh, thank you for mentioning that, Ed. I, uh, of course, you know we don't. We don't have many who are coming out to to public meetings, but I didn't I didn't receive any comments uh, either um, from anyone who wanted to comment on the um, on the budget amendment. Okay. Closed. All right, Mr. Lichty. We aren't quite a one-stop shop. We we uh, would love to have an eye reading program for math and reading, but we don't have one. So we measured uh, the number of engagements our students had in Google Docs, Zoom, Google Drive, and Canvas. Uh, if they're in their Google Docs, it's their school account, and I'm pretty sure they wouldn't be using that for anything other than schoolwork because uh, then we'd have access to it. So. They probably uh, have not done that. Uh, Zoom and Google Drive and Canvas usage. Um, our Canvas usage went down when the governor declared that we were coming back to school and all the grades would be based on work that was due before March 13th. The kids kind of slacked off. They have picked back up uh, after my letter that um, their grades would be come due on June 2nd. That they had to make up work or things that need to improve that they would need to get that done. So they have gotten a little more excited recently. And then okay. our next slide is our uh, application uses by time of day. You can see about April 16th that we took a nosedive. Um, and then our recent guidance, it's starting to pick up again. So we were doing fairly well. And we didn't tell them that um, it wasn't great and we just told the kids that it was work that your teacher may assign when we come back, when we get to come back, and then when we didn't get to come back, they knew we were spoofing them a little. We got them on Saturday and Sundays. Yeah, they, they're uh, odd little creatures. They're up all night and they work on weekends and the teachers are still eight to five in it. And, uh, I had a student email me yesterday that the uh, teacher hadn't responded. They, they emailed them a couple days ago, and I talked to the teacher, and they emailed them Saturday night about 6 o'clock. <laughs> and the kid emailed me Sunday afternoon. So, we We, uh, on April 30th is when the new guidance came <coughs> out, because uh, we had been told time and time and time and time again that you couldn't open up your grade books, you couldn't put anything into the grade books because school was closed and so we that we weren't going to be able to uh, post grades uh, for that work um, until school opened uh, again and then uh, it was the 30th of April not last week but the week before it was on a Thursday that that they gave us the new guidance and um, all of that uh, it completely changed and so um, so we like Todd said we got a little bit more uh, participation uh, from our students. All right, Mr. Lang. Okay, good evening, everybody. I was just going through uh, something very similar to Todd, how we gauged uh, the middle school engagement. Uh, so starting out, same thing with the Google Docs. Uh, we tracked that uh, roughly over uh, 1,900 Google Docs during this closure of the last 30 days. Uh, Zoom, uh, you know, I like that Zoom uh, data because uh, part of uh, one thing that we did push our parents and students towards uh, was to engage on the online learning as opposed to the hard copy. So we really, really preached that, communicated that home, that uh, we are more than willing to send this home to you, uh, but it's not going to be the same uh, because you're not going to have the interaction with the teacher inside the classroom. 
And so really proud of that Zoom number. You know, you know hats off to our teachers. They uh, adapted, adapted uh, very quickly in, you know, in a week's time when we were just putting resources out to parents. And then we got to go ahead to be able to interact a little bit more with our students. Uh, they had about a week to put all this together. And um, you know, so pleased with the Zoom, uh, the instructional coaches gave us a couple of tutorials on Zoom and the teachers did weekly Zoom meetings with their students. And so with the Zooms, you know, we had about 1,600 over the, thir the, the, the uh, 30 days that we tracked uh, Zoom participants at the middle school. And that is just, uh, that's, that's pretty incredible uh, for uh, the students because prior to this, the, the students probably weren't all that familiar with Zoom. Uh, and, uh, you know, some teachers were and some teachers weren't. So really proud of that, Mark. And then uh, the other one, uh, Canvas, uh, total engagement uh, out of 435, approximately 435, you know, we're looking at about 375 students that uh, got onto Canvas and were uh, at least um, uh, engaging in some of the learning opportunities. I won't say that every student engaged in every learning opportunity, but at some point uh, they got on Canvas. And we tried to make it as simple as possible for our parents and our students uh, where they could just go to the Google Calendar on Canvas, click the calendar, and for that day, for that week, the student knew what they were supposed to be doing for those classes. So, John, will you just slide yep, down a little bit? Yep. So this is kind of the breakdown uh, on this one. Out of school, in school, all that is just time of day. So you know, during the school day would be in school, and then outside of school would be weekends, and then uh, um, past I think it's four o'clock. So uh, by the day, roughly about 40 students a day uh, getting on to check what's uh, coming up for the week and um, what the teachers were putting out there. And so that's just kind of across uh, the board where we were at. Uh, we stayed pretty steady uh, throughout. You know, you can see some days are higher than others. Um, but uh, a lot of times the teachers would uh, have the initial Canvas uh, assignments and then have follow-up Zoom meetings uh, throughout the week. So uh, pretty pleased with that participation. But, you know, the Canvas one is the big one because that's, that's where the learning material was uh, placed at. And so... I'm uh, proud of our families to be able to uh, guide their students at home and encourage their students because, you know, as a staff, we said from the get-go, if we don't have that parental support, uh, this isn't going to go very well. So uh, based on the data, our parents did a great, our teachers put meaningful work out there for our students during this time, and then our parents uh, got behind that and really, you know, helped us get their students engaged. So uh, any questions? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Katie, did you want to talk a little bit about professional development? And do you want this? You want this screen? I can give you this. Um, yeah. It changed five zero two five. There it is. Okay, so in uh, in making all of this move forward, like um, Mr. Lang and Mr. Lichty stated, it was a quick turnaround. So everything that we were doing face to face now has to be digital. And when you're a sixth through twelfth grade student, you had access to a device and it was probably home with you and you were familiar with Canvas, which made a difference. However, not 100% across the line was everything um, that we do every day in school loaded into Canvas. Then you compound that with K through five having iPads and they were doing things in the classroom with them, but that wasn't their primary way of engaging in the learning. So a matter of weeks turn around and we flip the switch and now we have kids learning in a digital environment 
without uh, a teacher by their side. So how did they do that? that it, there's a lot going into it, and I think we're learning every day uh, something new to make uh, student learning more, more engaging and more positive and our own comfort level as we move forward with that. I know sometimes when you talk about Zoom, if, a, if any of you have facilitated a Zoom session, to try to get that to be interactive and fluid, you need a production assistant, at least I do, to be able to do that. If you're gonna do things like polling and reactions and breakout rooms and all of that type of stuff, to have an engaging lesson and to have it be interactive takes some serious skill. Um, I'm so impressed with how our teachers are putting all of this together uh, not on top of the, the things that they already have in their digital platforms. So one thing that, that this is the secondary view of it, uh, is a document that the instructional coaches put together to help serve uh, and meet teacher needs overall. So this started, this is um, March 30th through, and it actually goes beyond April 2nd, but starting March 30th, they jumped in with, with every appendage possible from feet to fingertips uh, to make sure that teachers had the opportunity to practice and play in these platforms. Um, 30 minutes would be what they were scheduled for, and they usually went around 30 minutes, but they might have gone a little bit longer. Um, and then they started to also record these. So we now have a repository as we bring on new staff, or heaven forbid we ever have to do this again, we have the ability to go back and revisit some of those things. So we're starting to collect what that learning looks like. So you can see Zoom, practice, Q&A. Well, that's paid off. Our students have the option of connecting with their teacher in a variety of ways. Um, Screencastify, how do I show my screen? How do I, how do I make sure I record those things? Um, Google Hangouts, some of us had never used a Google Hangout session before or Google Meet. Because when everything is bogged down with Zoom, what do you do? You go to your backup program, which is Google Hangout at this point, or Google Meet. Online learning with, uh, with, within Canvas, um, welcoming to Canvas. So if I was a teacher that didn't have some of those things in there, then what, what did I really want to do overall? Um, so March 30th is when we started with that. And then on the far right-hand side, you can see where they filled in all of those options. Anything that you can think of, they really tried to make sure they were being supportive. So they offered those things several, several times. Midway through, Zoom decided to change our security protocols. Within a matter of a day or two, they had a session up for teachers to experiment and practice in a safe environment before going live with students. Um, even things like the Google Calendar and how that can help them out. Um, the tech in providing enrichment, they facilitated conversations with teachers about what do we need. How, what do you, how are your students responding? And then coming up with some things together. So it wasn't just driven from uh, an instructional coach to the group. And before they did all of this, they made sure that they were talking to teachers. What do you need? And they were taking polls and they were taking surveys so they could figure out that comfort level of what their next step is. It was really uh, great to watch that just-in-time teaching for what they needed to work with on, uh, in the classroom. You even go down, uh, some things that I was really glad that they thought up or that someone had s said something was that how can we make social emotional learning work during this time? You'll know that one of our big rocks as a district is social emotional uh, behavioral health of our students and of our staff and that has been just the priority of everything we do in engagement and strategies to make sure that that's uh, being met for our students. They figured out a way to get it digitally, and so we reached out to partners uh, like Four Oaks and Brian Christofferson and their expertise, and we practiced uh, our community circles and our morning meetings before we did them with students through uh, the digital world. So just some really great overall things that are, are, are being put out there. Um, and again, the list, this is the entire comprehensive list, and you can see as I scroll through that it's a lot of information. Everything from digital world and facilitating your content to social emotional support, um, both as an adult and meeting the needs of your students. I don't have the list from uh, the elementary part, but they, they are working through PLCs. Um, they, the elementary teachers have just been amazing in what they've resourced and, gra and, and grabbed onto. Lots from the math and the reading program through Curriculum and Associates, tons through the AEA. The AEA has done an amazing job putting out really good, high quality sessions that they've registered for 
and they've even figured out a way to bundle that for credit so that they have uh, things for their license to renew. So um, they've attended tons of math and Google related uh, pieces. They've attended science, they've attended uh, social emotional learning, tons of lists from our AEA as well. So I, I want to express appreciation for them. Um, the vendors that we've worked with religiously have also stepped up. Uh, Curriculum and Associates is just one that we've worked strongly with. Um, really Great Reading is another one of our vendors that we work closely with and use their programs. Everybody has, has supported us with that, and our teachers have just done a great job picking out those things that they uh, need to support their students. So uh, I, I appreciate everything that everyone has done. Any questions on what's going on? Superintendent's report. Okay, on. Let me pull this back up here. Just a few things. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to ask Todd to, to come back over and just chat a little bit about uh, graduation um, and and some of the things uh, that we've we've planned, including uh, graduation date and senior recognition, and then our awards assembly. So, Todd. Okay, graduation. <clears throat> We have scheduled our graduation for the 27th of June, and we're going to graduate the kids on the 27th of June regardless. Uh, we're hoping that we can have an outdoor ceremony at Maple Leaf at 7 p.m. on the 27th. If we are still, if we are still social distancing, uh, we'll bring the kids in starting at 